the topic for today is processor organization now organization of a processor can be understood by considering the requirements placed on the processor the things that it must do say for example it fetches the instructions from the memory then decodes the instruction and then fetch the data from the memory or io then after fetching the data it processes the data it will perform arithmetic or logical operation on the data and then it will write the data either in memory or to a io processor so for all these operations a processor needs a small internal memory in today's video we will discuss the simplified view of processor and a detailed view of processor let us start welcome to our channel engineering and technology for you if you are not subscribed to our channel kindly subscribe and press the bell icon so that you get notifications for our future videos on this subject the topic for today is processor organization let us start with the introduction see to understand the organization of processor you have to consider the requirements placed on the processor that is nothing but the things that it must do the first is the fetching of instruction say the processor reads an instruction from memory or uh, say cache or main memory or register then it will interpret the instruction now interpret the instruction means decoding of the instruction so this may uh, for this it will determine the action to be taken for the instruction then once that is decided if the instruction requires data it will fetch the data again the data will come from memory or io device then once we get the data the data will be processed so the processor processes the data so by processing means it will either do a arithmetic or logical operation on the data now whatever the processing of the data done by the processor this result has to be written in memory or to the io device so that operation we call it as the write data so in this way the processor needs to store some data temporarily it must remember the location of the last instruction so that uh, it knows from where to get the next instruction it also needs to store the data so in other words the processor needs a small internal memory so let us see the organization of the processor the first is the cpu with the system bus now in this we have shown the processor consisting of the alu that is the arithmetic and logic unit then there is a control unit and we have set of registers so the alu will perform the actual computation or processing of data so either arithmetic or logical or operations they are performed by the alu and the control unit controls the movement of data and instructions into or out of the processor and also controls the operation of the alu 
then here in addition to this alu and control unit we have shown the resistors so these resistors are nothing but the internal memory so uh, consisting of storage locations that's why they are called as the resistors so these are internal to the processor and the processor has control bus data bus and address bus connected to the processor so these buses combinedly they are called as the system bus they are connected to the processor and the data instruction that will flow through all these buses so the address bus will carry the address the data bus will carry the data and the control bus will carry the control signals so in this way this three buses will control the flow of data and the processor will perform the different operations on the data now let us see the detailed view of the processor internal structure of the cpu so here the central processing unit or cpu or processor whatever we call it it consists of the arithmetic and logic unit now inside the arithmetic and logic unit we have the status flags say for example we have the status flag here means uh, the carry flag auxiliary carry flag then sign flag then the zero flag and parity flag such flags they are called as the status flags they will be present in the uh, arithmetic and logic unit and then uh, we have the shifter that is for shifting the data left or right then there is a complementer which will complement the data and we have the arithmetic and boolean logic which will perform the arithmetic and uh, the logic operation on the data so the data transfer and logic control paths are indicated here and there is a internal processor bus here you can see internal cpu bus so this is bidirectional flow of data and then again we have bidirectional flow of data to the resistors and control unit will also have the flow of data and control signals and this is the the paths for the data so in this way say uh, the alu operates fast and because alu in fact operates only on the data in the internal processor memory so it it will perform the arithmetic operations on the data and this internal bus it will carry the data from resistors to the al so the flow of the data will be through this internal cpu bus so in this way the detail structure when we study the detail structure will have to study all the resistors present in the cpu as well as the details of the arithmetic and logic unit so this is how the processor will be organized so with this now you can see the similarity between the computer and the processor so here internal structure of the computer and the internal structure of the processor they are similar because computer also consists of say 
the major elements in computer and major elements in the processor we have for computer we have the processor then input and output that is io and memory so when they are connected it forms the computer system and the flow of data will be from memory to the processor or input output device to the processor and from uh, processor to the input output device or to the memory so in this way the data will flow from one element to other element in case of computer similarly for the processor we have the control unit alu and resistors and that's why the data will flow in these three elements in case of the processor so that's why the organization of the processor is similar to the organization of the computer so with this we come to the end of this video if you have any questions you can contact me on facebook twitter gmail or instagram then if you like the video press the like button and share with your friends with the help of this icon which is available on the youtube and subscribe to our channel engineering and technology for you and don't forget to press the bell icon so that if you press the bell icon after subscribing you will get notifications for our future videos so that's why you will not have to search the videos on youtube and directly you will get the notification for the videos then thanks for watching have a nice day